Thank you, Mom. I have a treat for you. Good evening, everyone. Typically, we would start our events with a land acknowledgement of the traditional territory in which we are gathering. Our university campus is situated on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas, a branch of the greater Anishinaabe nation, which includes Algonquin, Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi. Because everyone is tuning in with us remotely across a variety of cities, and we don't wanna forego this important element of rec reconciliation, I would like to ask everyone to take a moment to acknowledge that the land they are on is the traditional territory of many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis people. As a university community, we are dedicated to continue to increase our awareness, understanding, and gratitude for the lands we share. Thank you. My name is Carolyn Howard, and I'm the Alumni Relations Coordinator at Ontario Tech. On the behalf of the Alumni Association Council and Ridgeback Athletics, I'd like to welcome you to this evening's Ridgeback Alumni Speaker Series. We are pleased to have Megan Legg and Emily Yuza with us this evening to talk about their experiences at Ontario Tech on the inaugural lacrosse and hockey teams and where life has taken them since graduation. The Alumni Association Council is constantly trying to think of ways to engage fellow alumni and if there's a silver lining out of this difficult time, it's that we've been able to move our events online, meaning alumni anywhere in the world can participate. We won't have the same networking opportunity as we would as if we were, if we were in person. However, we will still have the opportunity to ask questions through a moderated Q&A, which can be found at the bottom of the screen. We're also opening up the chat function this evening, so feel free to say hello and drop your comments in there. Also want to thank everyone who submitted questions when they registered. Uh, they helped direct this evening's conversation. I would now like to introduce our moderators for this evening, Celine Tessier and Samantha Gates. Celine is a goalie on the Ridgeback women's hockey team from Chapelot, Ontario. Celine is majoring in health science and is a U Sports academic all Canadian. So thank you for being with us this evening, Celine. We also have Samantha, who is a member of the Ridgeback lacrosse team from Uxbridge, Ontario. She's majoring in criminology and says that her Ontario Tech highlight is scoring the game tying goal at OUA in second year after a movie worthy speech from her team captain. Thank you as well. I would also now like to introduce our speakers for this evening. Megan Legg was a member of the inaugural Ontario Tech women's hockey team and graduated in 2011. Megan currently works for the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry as a Senior Lands and Waters Technical Specialist, where she administers Crown Land for resource development and public use. She enjoys playing ball hockey during the summer, along with co-ed volleyball and hockey during the winter. Megan also assists the Chapel Chicks hockey team. She has four beautiful boys and is proud to say that her oldest just started playing Timbit hockey with the Chapel Huskies. Megan and her family enjoy fishing and spending weekends at the cottage. Welcome, Megan. We also have Emily Yuza, who was a member of the inaugural women's lacrosse team and was Ontario Tech's first ever OUA All-Star in any sport when recognized at the 2010 OUA Field Lacrosse Championship. Emily went on to study law at Osgoode Hall Law School, 
Emily is an associate at Davies, Ward, Phillips, and Weinberg, and acts for clients on a variety of corporate transactions, including public and private mergers and acquisitions, financing and banking transactions, and other corporate matters. While Emily has stepped away from team sports for the time being, she is an avid runner and has run two marathons along with four half marathons. Welcome, Emily. Thank you so much to the both of you for joining us this evening. Selene and Samantha, uh, feel free to start the conversation. Carolyn, sorry. I think it says that the host has turned my video off, so I'm not able to start it. <laughs> All good. Let me help you out with that one okay. there. All right, perfect. I think we've got everybody up here now. Awesome, Celine and Samantha, take it away. Thank you, Carolyn. Megan, Emily, we're gonna start the evening off with hopefully an easy question. How did you get your start in your respective sports? Emily, we'll start with you. Um, okay, well, um, first of all, thanks for having me and thanks Celine and Samantha for, um, for moderating. Um, so I got started in lacrosse, I think I was in sort of grade six or grade seven. Um, and at the time I was playing hockey um, and softball and um, wasn't really thrilled with my summer sport of softball. Um, and I remember, I think when I would maybe a few years prior, I'd gone to sort of watch the Ontario summer games, which were being held in Pickering at the time and seeing this, um, sport that I had like never seen before and at the time was um, not particularly well known. Um, and a few years later, I don't really know how it happened, but I think just an opportunity came up to sort of try out the sport um, and play, just go out sort of and play it one day and um, do sort of some house league. And I just like fell in love with it immediately. Um, and it was very transferable with hockey. Um, I think you'll you probably find a lot of lacrosse players also um, play hockey. Um, and it was also awesome because it was like the first sport I had found where like all of the coaches were women. Um, until then I had been previously coached, like all my hockey coaches were men, all my softball coaches were men. And um, this was like a very unique um, sport to females um, because women's lacrosse is totally different from men's lacrosse. Um, so basically started playing and just like picked it up immediately, loved it, um, was like good at it, which definitely helped. Um, and then uh, as a lot of you probably know, like lacrosse really just took off and particularly in the Durham region after that. And it's now, um, huge and I think probably one of the fastest growing women's sports um, definitely in Ontario um, so and then it sort of took over and it became like my sport um, and you know I kept playing hockey a bit but um, it became my summer activity um, and then just kept playing all through university. Thanks for sharing Emily what about you Megan? I think you're still oh, unmuted. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I'm actually the youngest of four girls. So my sisters were all playing hockey and about, I think I was about seven, I was figure skating and my dad came to me one day and said, Hey, you want to go play hockey? Cause I was doing really well in my figure skating program. And so just like my sisters, I left, started playing or started to try out for the Durham West uh, girls rep hockey team and about a few weeks later after making the team I couldn't go back to to figure skating and I found that uh, playing in a team sport was a lot more enjoyable than just figure skating being a, a single figure skater um, so yeah after that I just kept playing with Durham and it took me all the way to university. Awesome. Um, so our next question is, how did you choose Ontario Tech? And did you know that there was a possibility to play hockey or lacrosse at school? So I guess we can kind of go back and forth here. So Emily, if you wanted to answer this one first. Yeah, sure. So um, I chose Ontario Tech for a few reasons. 
Um, first of all, I grew up in Whitby, so the idea of being able to stay um, close to home uh, was big for me. Um, and then I, I wanted to study business um, and I liked the, well, at the time it was UIT, I guess now Ontario Tech, I have to get used to saying that. Um, I just liked the, the business program. Um, I liked the practical elements of it. And, um, you know, at the times makes, makes me feel old, but, you know, in 2000, I guess it was 2007 when I started, like the, the tech element of the school was um, a really big um, differentiator. Um, and, you know, now everyone just has a laptop in school. And so I don't know. Um, that it's the same, necessarily the same draw that it was, um, but that was, in, that was intriguing to me of the um, sort of integration of tech into, the, um, into my education. I was hoping that we'd have a lacrosse team and we didn't right away, um, but I knew that there was a, um, you know, a desire to sort of start one and, um, you know, it took a bit of time to get it off the ground. But like I said, you know, lacrosse is really big in Durham region. So there definitely was um, a push to get us going. And it's so great to see that we started sort of started off with our humble beginnings um, of, you know, just, you know, sort of barely scraping by and, um, you know, barely being able to pull together a team. And now, you know, our lac women's lacrosse team is, um, you know, really competitive. So that's great. Awesome, thank you for that. Uh, Megan, did you wanna go ahead and answer that question too? Well, I'm actually from Pickering originally, born, born and raised there. So I as well wanted to stay close to home and, um, my first year, I wasn't entirely sure what I wanted to do. So I actually attended Durham College uh, with the expectation that I would apply to a university once I kind of knew where I wanted to go with that. Um, so while I was attending Durham College, I was actually contacted by Scott Barker um, asking, at the time it was a DC UOIT team. So our hockey team played uh, college teams and university teams. So he contacted me and see if I wanted to play for them for a bit. And I found out actually it was a former teammate that saw me at the school and let him know because she was playing for the team. Uh, so then the next year after, after we finished that year, I had applied to UIT or Ontario Tech. I'm going to do that as well, Emily. Um, Ontario Tech and started in criminology or sorry, took criminology and justice. And then we went from there playing the next four years. So it kind of chose me, I guess, a little bit. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Megan. So the next question, you guys were both part of a new program. So what sort of growing pains did a brand new team have? So I don't know if Megan, you want to start this one off and kind of switch up the order? Okay. Well, I think with any new team and any team at all, um, it's, it's kind of tough losing consecutive games. Like you're not you don't come into a new program and win every single game that you play. So uh, I think that's definitely a growing pain, getting used to um, maybe having a few losses under your belt. Um, but then we learn to, to take the good as it came in. So when we, you know, did really well, tied some games, won some, won some games, we kind of took off from that. Um, and also I found that uh, kind of starting the new program uh, with, it being a clear slate, like not really sure what, what we had to do for, you know, working out pre games, all that kind of stuff. So establishing actually your routines and study routines and all those kind of things. That was a little bit of a learning, learning curve for us. And, and so, yeah, we had, uh, we had some help though with, uh, Scott Barker and everybody around the athletic department to kind of guide us where we need to go. Thanks, Megan. What about you, Emily? Yeah, so I mean, lacrosse is a, is different from hockey in that many people grow up playing hockey. It's not it's not hard to find people who play hockey, um, or at least sort of just have played hockey in the past. Um, lacrosse, like the first year we started out, like we only had maybe like six or seven sort of true lacrosse players at 
Ontario Tech, like girls who had played lacrosse before. Um, and, and the lacrosse community is small, so we knew, all knew each other. Like we knew who was there. Um, and so what, what we all actually had to do was like find our friends who are athletes and who weren't already playing a varsity sport and get them to come play lacrosse. Um, and teach them how to play lacrosse on the fly. Um, so that first year, like we, most of the girls on our team had sort of never played lacrosse before or maybe played like one year of house league. Um, and so it was, it was frustrating at times. It was also really fun. Like we just found some girls who are like, like good, <laughs> girls who could run um, who had played like, you know, soccer and, uh, or field hockey or whatever they had played in high school and who like, we convinced like, just come out and like have fun with us and we'll teach you a new sport and you don't need to be good. We just need like enough people to sort of field a team. Um, and I actually like have so many memories of that first year, um, with some of those women who like, were like just incredible sports who <laughs> just, you know, well, like we got, we went out that first year and we lost every game. Um, and, you know, we barely had enough girls to field a team. So we were, we did not have, you know, 10 subs sitting on the sideline. Um, and for those of you who don't know much about women's lacrosse, you have 11 players plus a goalie on the field at one time. So you need, you know, a lot of players. So we lost, you know, every game, but I, I remember like we, we went to the OUAs and we played McMaster in our second game and we got really close to beating them. And it was a huge accomplishment considering um, that, you know, most of the girls on our team had never played before. And so that was frustrating, but it was also like, you know, setting aside um, my desire to just win all the time. So I'm very competitive, um, but also like thinking about like the program that we're building um, and, you know, that was a building block. And there were a few years after that, we're still like, and, and I'm sure there's still, you know, women on the team who are, who are relatively new to the sport. Um, and that's great. But um, yeah, so it, it was tough at the beginning. It was also fun. I have so many memories from that time. You just set aside expectations and just go out and have a good time. And um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys for that. Um, so our next question here is, did you have to foster a sense of family within the athletic department? Or did the fact that you guys were all kind of starting like a new program and growing together, did that bring the team closer together? So Megan, if you wanted to start this one off. Yeah, uh, with most teams, you're, you're generally kind of like a little family. You're seeing each other four or five times a day. So within our team, we were definitely a family. And because I found the athletic department was a little bit smaller at the time, um, I guess we didn't really have to foster it because the people who worked there were really invested in their athletes and with the, for their teams or invested in their teams as well. So they knew who you were and who a lot of the players were when you're walking around the athletic department and you could speak to them and say hi and how's like, how's it going and stuff. So I don't really think I, we had to foster that relationship. It kind of just came naturally. And um, yeah, and, and same thing with other teams, I, I worked there. So I worked with a lot of the other um, athletes. And so we kind of, with a smaller campus and a, a smaller department at the time, uh, yeah, I didn't feel like I really had to foster it. It just kind of came naturally. Perfect, thank yeah. you. Emily? On, um, yeah, like I said, like we all, those of us who had played lacrosse before, like already sort of knew each other, it's a very small community. so. Um, we had had that built already and then sort of brought in our friends who we <laughs> taught to play the game. So we developed, I think, like a fun bond um, for sure. Um, we, like, I remember at OUAs, like all of us going uh, to do team building and going to play laser tag uh, uh, in London. Um, <laughs> So like, I, I still have memories like that. Like we were a good um, close knit group for sure. Perfect, thank you, Emily. So before I go to the next question, I'm noticing a question from Cole. This one's directed to Emily. So you said that women and men's lacrosse are different. 
for people like myself who are not too familiar, what is the main difference? Yeah, so there's sort of like two types of, or two, um, yeah, I guess two types of lacrosse. There's field lacrosse and there's box lacrosse. Um, and box lacrosse is what you see when you go to like a hockey arena in the summer, um, which is basically in, in a hockey rink. Um, and there are some like, some women do play, like there are some women's box lacrosse leagues, but um, when we talk about women's lacrosse, we're typically talking about field lacrosse. Um, and that's, you know, there's, that's where, you know, they, they, where we have like, you know, world championships and NCAA and whatever, and you know, what our, our own women's lacrosse team is, is field lacrosse. Um, the difference is if you've, <laughs> you should look up a men's field lacrosse game versus a women's field lacrosse game. It'll help. Um, the women's, the women's game, basically all you wear is all, all you use is a mouth guard and a stick. Um, and sometimes goggles, there's no, um, you know, body checking, there's no slashing. Um, the game's like really focused on speed and finesse. Um, the women, um, the men's, field game it's also very fast and also has a lot of finesse but um they have more sort of body contact um they just basically like smoke each other with their sticks um and so so the women's game i think is a bit faster um you should definitely just look up on youtube um some uh women's and men's field lacrosse games and you'll see uh, quite quickly what the differences are Thank you, Emily, for clarifying. And thank you, Cole, for the question. So I'll move on to the next uh, question. So Megan, you can start this one off. What was your proudest moment as a Richback? Um, I would definitely have to say that it was probably when I was named captain um, for, the, for the team my first year. And well, it was kind of my second year because I had played for the DC UOIT team. And, uh, but that was a role I was able to hold for four years and was honored to have that. So it was definitely probably one of my most my proudest moments. <laughs> I mean, there's a whole bunch that you can go into, but. Uh, of course, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. What about you, um, Emily? Um, probably, uh, well, we never won a game when I was there. <laughs> But like I said, like we only, the, the program only started late into my time at Ontario Tech. Um, so I, uh, so, but my my proudest moment is definitely that game in the U8 when we almost won. Just because, like I said, like we just had a lot of girls who were, you know, playing for the first time. And I think we just showed a ton of heart um, and, you um, but I, a couple years after I graduated, um, I went to see the women's lacrosse team play um, at OUAs. Um, and I don't know how many years ago this was. I wanna say like five or, five or six years ago. Um, and there was like, they were like winning and it was just, it was just proud for me because looking back and having been involved in like the first program and then seeing them now like out there on the field where it was like anyone believed they could beat any of the other teams. So that was a, a proud moment for me as a spectator. Awesome. Thank you guys both for that. Um, so our next question is what advice would you give to a current varsity athlete? Uh, Emily, if you wanted to start this one off. Um, yeah, I, I think I give a few pieces of advice. Um, first is just like, enjoy it, um, when you can, cause you don't, you don't get to keep playing sports for your whole life. Um, I mean, you can, but it's, it's not the same, like, you know, being a university athlete is really sort of your glory years as, um, as an athlete. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, like I, I, now that I'm, you know, now that I work, I, I don't, I'm not able to, you know, go out and play in a lacrosse league. And even if I did it, it wouldn't be the same level of competition. Um, so just, you know, enjoy this time while you can. Um, my advice also is that 
um, you are, you're a student athlete. So student is equally as important as athlete. Um, so just like you, you can do both. Like, I think there's this idea that sometimes that if you like are too focused on your sports, you're not gonna be able to do school or vice versa. And you really can do both well. Um, and there's a lot of examples of that, but also remember like you are a student and depending on what your goals are, um, you know, after school, like just make sure you, you know, focus on your, um, your school and, and your grades and, you know, getting any support that you need in order to be able to do well in both. Um, sometimes people wait too long to sort of ask for help. Um, yeah, that's what I would say. Enjoy it while you can. Awesome. Thank you. What about you, Megan? Yeah, I definitely agree with Emily that uh, she pretty much hit it right on the nail, nailed it on the head there. But uh, I was also going to add that you put everything that you can into it, put your best foot forward and try to be the best student, best athlete that you can, because like Emily said, you don't get that time back and you don't want to look back saying, oh, I should have worked out more or, you know, studied harder or something like that. And yeah, so definitely just put your best foot forward because you don't get that time back. Thank you, Megan. So this question is for Megan. Um, you're still working quite co closely with minor hockey. Are there any key learnings from your time with Ontario Tech that you apply to the kids you coach now? Well, I would say that when I was at university uh, playing as a Ridgeback, my coaches kept a fairly open line of communication, communication with me. Um, so it always felt like I could talk to them about things that were going on, you know, on the ice, off the ice, uh, where if somebody came to me with an issue that I could kind of bounce it off them as the captain, uh, kind of being the in-between. So that's kind of something that I try to do. I, I coach younger girls. There actually there's different age levels because there's not too many, as you know, and <laughs> they're not, there's only uh, one female team at the time or at this time. And uh, so you to keep that communication open with them because they are going through so many different things and it's beyond just what's on the ice. So I like to have that so that they know they can come to me when they're a little off or if they need help or something, uh, either it's on ice or, you know, sometimes there's a little bit of drama as well. So um, if, if they have somebody that's there to be able to kind of coach them through that and like coach them on the ice, that's something that I kind of brought with me um, and kind of explaining why we're, we're doing things. Cause you know, I'm not just going to make them skate. And then they're like, well, why are we doing this? So kind of just explaining why we're doing certain drills to them so that they can understand um, the importance of that. And I found that I took that away. I took that from, from university um, to, to kind of talk to them and not talk at them basically. <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys for that. Um, so we do have a question directed at Emily, but before we get to that, Allison has a question in the chat and it is, what would you say is the best advice for a recent grad trying to get started after university? Um, I guess I can take this one. Um, I mean, it sort of depends what you want to do um, and what your goals are. Um, I think like, I think the first thing to say is like, don't be stressed if you don't know right away what you want to do. Not everyone knows what they want to do when they get out of university. Yeah. Um, people like go on totally different paths from what they studied. Um, and, it, and it's like, okay, not to know that. I mean, when you graduate from undergrad, if you went right from high school, like, I mean, I was 21 when I graduated from undergrad, like, that's like still super young. Like if I hadn't known what I was gonna do, like that would have been, um, would have been totally fine. Um, so that's my first piece of advice. Like if you don't know, like don't stress about it. Um, and then I think just like set, think about like deep down what your goals are um, and be like realistic about what your goals are and true to yourself um, and it's never too late to sort of change your trajectory 
Um, if you've studied something and you realize that you don't like it, or you don't want to work in that space, um, it's never too late to decide, you know what, like, this is where I want to go. I mean, I studied business and then went into law. I, re I didn't realize, I realized in sort of third year, I wanted to do law. Um, but there are like, there are people in that I went to law school with that did engineering and decided they didn't want to be engineers and went into law. Um, and then I know people I went to law school with who decided they don't want to do law and now they're going on to practice medicine. So like be true to yourself. The last thing you want to do is get stuck in something that's, you know, not going to um, make you happy. Um, and then once you do figure out what you want to do, like think about what your goals are and what you need to do um, to get there and like make a plan of action um, and, you know, talk to people who can help you, um, you know, use the, like the resources at Ontario Tech, um, you know, network um, and, and as like, you know, in, in the Ridgebacks community, like there's, you know, a great network of alumni and, and outside of Ridgebacks, even just Ontario Tech. So, you know, use those resources, reach out to people, talk to people, get advice, all that. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Megan, did you have anything to add to that? Emily cleared it <laughs> perfectly. I just, I, I agree, don't be bound by just your uh, degree because I myself, I have a criminology and justice degree. And uh, I'm working in the Ministry of Natural Resources. So um, things can kind of translate with each other because I, I work a lot with legislation and policies and things like that. So um, I'm not doing criminal law, but I'm working with like a certain type of legislation and law that I work within. So yeah, just branch out and don't be held down by, by just what your degree says because there's so many different jobs out there that translate. Perfect, thank you guys. Um, so the question that was directed to Emily, it was media tends to portray lawyers as lone wolves. Do you find any parallels between the practice of law and your experience in team sports? Yeah, so I think it's safe to say that the way the media portrays lawyers is very inaccurate in more ways than just portraying us as lone wolves. Um, basically, everything you see on TV about uh, our lives is uh very inaccurate um i am a corporate lawyer but it is nothing like being on suits uh, <laughs> <tell you> that. <laughs> not nearly as glamorous or as um exciting or um eth unethical as everything on that <laughs> um yeah. I, I think that's i actually really like this question because in some ways lawyers are lone wolves but then also we um work on teams and i think like my experience as an athlete as as a um athlete on teams like on, in team sports has um served me really well in my practice um the way like so I mean, and it varies by types of lawyers, um, but I'm a corporate lawyer. So I work on a lot of transactions um, where we're acting for, you know, corporate clients who are, for example, looking to acquire another company. Um, so when you do that, um, you bring in like specialists from different areas of the law. So I do corporate law, but we have lawyers who um, specialize in tax law and who specialize in, you know, real estate and um, competition and all these different areas. And so I um, personally, you know, focus uh, on, you know, corporate and drafting and things like that. And I spend a lot of time alone um, doing those things and focus on those things. Um, but then I also work with, um, you know, other corporate lawyers who are junior to me, other corporate lawyers who are senior to me, and then other um, specialists. So I do think of it a lot like a sports team where you have, you know, like the, in lacrosse, it's the attackers. Like I was an attacker when I played um, and I bring one thing to the team, but then the midfielders bring something else and then the defenders bring something else. And then the goalie um, brings, you know, the last bit together. Um, and so that's very much how um, 
how our, you know, files work. So I do a lot of work independently and, um, you know, that I, you can look at that as like, you know, the, the practice that you do when you're alone, you know, the workouts that you do and the, the wall ball and all that stuff you do when you're on your own. And then you come together as a team and like bring your different skill sets to the team. Um, so definitely there's a lot of um, overlap for sure. And I realize that all sounded cheesy, but it's actually true. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for sharing, Emily. So we have a question for Megan that was submitted in advance from Angela Wood. However, we're curious to hear Emily's thoughts on this as well. So here's the question. What aspects of being a varsity athlete, if any, did you not fully enjoy or embrace at the time, but now look back and miss? Angela works with athletics in her role that the university has found that while athletes may complain about training from time to time, they tend to miss the structure once they graduate. Was that the case for you? So I guess, Megan, you can start that one off. So we used to have to have uh, or take 5 a.m. spin classes with, with Angie. So I'm thinking she would probably uh, assume I'm going to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> is one of those didn't like at the time but if anyone's taken a spin class with Angie she definitely makes them enjoyable so um, I'd have to say I didn't fully embrace the level of competition I think that we were playing at and as Emily had said before you it's like at the top of your your you know your highlight the highlight of your career when you're playing at university um and in women's sports like there are other teams that you can play for but yeah it was definitely I didn't embrace that level of competition. And with that comes all the different things like the training at 5 a.m., the spin classes, the group, the group workouts. And as much as I love those while I was in it, um, I kind of just, you think it's just going to be there or it's just something that you do and you get it done. Um, but now I'm definitely missing those group workouts. Cause I just, I loved being with my teammates and, and working out with them and, and you don't really have anything. Um, I don't really have a set goal to work towards. So I don't find myself as motivated to work out or, or get out there and stuff like that. So, I mean, I only think I play in two tournaments a year, um, up here, so we don't have a, a league to play in. Um, we kind of have like the beer leagues. So yeah, I, I miss that competition for sure. Thanks for sharing, Megan. What about you, Emily? Yeah, I definitely relate to the point about um, athletes missing routine once they leave. I think that's um, definitely something that resonates with me. Um, when I went to law school, I did miss that. Like I was, I was, you know, really busy with school, but I missed having... Um, something else to you know to look to um and i think that goes to um a bigger lesson also which is i, I actually think being an athlete is really or doing something else in school whether it be athletics or some other extracurricular is really good because um, i think we all need balance in our lives and being just a student is um, can be really stressful. And I think it's good to have something else to, um, to think about and to work towards. Um, I, so yeah, I went, when I went to law school, I did miss having the routine. Um, and now that I'm, um, practicing, uh, I started running because I can't commit to team sports. I just, with my schedule, it's not, um, it's not like fair to my teammates to commit to anything. Um, but I started training for races because I found that it gave me a sense of routine. So I have like a training schedule and a goal that I'm working towards and um, I can train for that. Um, and so like doing something like that um, once you're done athletics is definitely something I would recommend because um, it just gives you some balance, gives you some routine, something to work towards. Um, and, you know, keeps you active, which I think is important. Um, it, we're athletes for a reason, like we like doing, yeah. <laughs> like being active. So it's good to have something like that or whether it be like, you know, coaching your kids in hockey or um, finding like a rec. Like I, I played ultimate Frisbee for a summer, which I had never played before. So just finding something else to um, give you some balance. 
Awesome. Thank you both for that. Um, so we have a question here from our current head lacrosse coach, Leanne. And her question is, do you guys have any words of encouragement for a current student who may be kind of unsure about reaching out to the coach or wanting to try out? Uh, Emily, if you wanted to start this one off. Yeah, I think just go for it. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Like your pride takes a little bit of a hit and, you know, yeah, at least you tried. Like, honestly, with all this, like with the pandemic, I think has put a, a lot of things into perspective for all of us, which is like, you know, you only have so many opportunities to do these things. So just like, give it a shot, go for it. Um, you never know until you try is just my view of everything generally. Um, and um, yeah, like it could be something like really great. Um, you know, there's like all the girls that played that first year that I played that like ended up loving it and they were, you know, reluctant at first, but you don't know until you give it a shot. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Megan, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, just I give it a shot, jump in. Like Emily said, um, I know that one of our, it's, it's kind of rare to have walk-ons. Like a lot of uh, girls are scouted or a lot of players are scouted beforehand. So you kind of know who's coming, who's already made it. And, uh, but we had, we had one, one girl when I was there who was a walk-on and she just, she made the team and she just absolutely bloomed and ended up being um, captain towards the end of her career there. So I would just say, go for it, take the shot because you don't know where it's going to go. It could be one of the best things that you do. Thank you for sharing, you both of you. Um, we have another question from Scott. So are you still in contact with your teammates from university? What could the department do to enhance opportunities for our alumni? So I don't know if Megan, you want to start that one off? Yeah, actually I have, I'm in contact with quite a few girls still. Um, you obviously make certain bonds with people who are kind of either like you, like, like you are or but I still have some friends that come up here um, and visit. They come all the way up to where I am. So um, to kind of enhance that, um, I don't know. I'm not really sure if there's something that they could do because you yourself are going to, there's so much in social media now. Like I pretty much, it's all through text or Facebook that I contact people. So I'm not really sure if there's anything else that they could do to, to enhance that situation unless, unless they're looking to connect uh, alumni with newer, newer students, um, newer athletes, um, then they would, that would be something that they could explore. Thank you, Megan. What about you, Emily? Yeah, I'm still in touch with um, many of the girls. A lot of them are off doing like cool things, um, <laughs> like very, geographically dispersed. So I can't say that I, um, that I see any of them a lot and I'm not really involved. Like I said, I sort of had to step away from the, um, from the lacrosse scene. Um, but yeah, like they're all off as like traveling nurses and having cute kids and, you know, <laughs> saving the world. <laughs> So yeah, so I'm still in touch. Um, I know like, I know that the coaches and I, I think Leanne is on here. So hi, Leanne, um, are, you know, putting in a lot of effort to um, sort of keep the alumni net networks going. Um, so, and I'm always happy to, you know, be a informal mentor to anyone or answer any questions or whatever. So I think, I, and I'm sure a lot of past athletes are the same way, um, willing to sort of do that. Yeah. And I think, uh, from what I know from the past already, they have senior nights sometimes where, uh, people who have played before can go back and watch the current teams, uh, play and kind of introduce them and things like that. So, um, I think they're already doing a great job. It's just kind of hard right now with the pandemic and, and where people live of course. So I don't get many chances to go down there uh, during the winter. So still see them. 
Perfect. Thank you, guys. So we have a question here from Caitlin, and it is, how has been how has being a Ontario Tech alumni helped you in your career? Uh, Emily, if you wanted to start this one off. Yeah, so I mean, the first way I think it helped me was um, in law school uh, because I got like a really practical education from Ontario Tech. Um, I think that really helped me. Like law school is is very theoretical in some ways, but it's also very practical, particularly in um, in corporate law, which is where I work. So I think the um, definitely the practical aspect of my education um, definitely helped me in law school and then into my career. Um, and then I'd say just like changing the question a bit to how has being um, a student athlete helped my career. Like definitely um, when I was applying to law school and when I was applying to law firms, um, being like showing that you were a student athlete um, really helps with applications um, because it shows that you're well-rounded. It shows that you're able to like balance school and other things. It shows that you have leadership skills, commitment, um, so on and so forth. So um, for like any ath student athletes on, you know, that, that are on here, like should absolutely leverage that when you apply for things. Um, that is like absolutely a skill that you should, um, you should, you know, work to your benefit because um, not everyone can manage that. So the fact that you do manage it um, and then are successful at it is definitely something that you, you know, should highlight in, in applications and on your resume and, and so on and so forth. Perfect. Thank you. What about you, Megan? Um, part of it was definitely that my program had a placement. So in my last year, I was put in my placement. And from there, I was able to actually get a job right after my placement was done and continue there for a bit, which always helps when you're trying to build your resume. Um, the other thing is networking. I had a lot of uh, contacts that I was able to, to reach back to and have them as, um, as people who could speak towards um, what we did as athletes and, and our commitment. So, uh, and actually I still to this day have uh, references <laughs> that uh, are personal references and kind of uh, for my athletic and work from UIT or sorry, Ontario Tech. <laughs> But yeah, so definitely networking. And um, I try to tell people if they're trying to choose between schools and they're really stuck to look at whether or not it has a placement because that that helped um, me choose my path as well as get a job further from there. Yeah, my my program also, I was in the faculty of business um, and we had a fourth year capstone, but um, I actually got it like there, there was an option to do an internship uh, the summer before. Um, in lieu of capstone. I don't know if that's still how it works. Um, but uh, so I, I did an internship at Hydro One the summer um, before fourth year. And I like I didn't end up continuing with Hydro One because um, I went into law. Um, but again, like that was something really good to have in my applications and my resume because it showed that I I had experience like you know, in a, in a large company um, and I could demonstrate skills from that. Um, so I, I totally agree, like where there's opportunities for placements, you should, you know, absolutely seize those. Perfect, thank you for sharing. So we have time for one last question. So this is kind of a two part question, one part for Megan and Emily and the other part for Sam and I. So. Um, to Megan and Emily, as members of the first teams, are there any traditions that you started that might still be occurring today? So is there anything that you guys started being the first lacrosse and hockey teams? Well, Celine, you'll be able to fact check me on whether yeah. or not it's still around. <laughs> um, so we had a few and they kind of, some of them came from like our coaches as well as the, the teammates. So one of our coaches had wanted nobody to step on the logo that was on the in the dressing room and it was massive at the time so you had the smallest space to walk by and I when I went back to visit I think it was two years ago three years ago 
the logo was so much smaller, but our logo looked amazing by the end of the year, the second year. And then the guys were able to walk on theirs and it just got kind of ripped up. So I don't know if that's still there, but um, also um, I'd say there was a couple of things like we kind of went by and lived, lived and died by this. It was never leave a man behind. And uh, so that was something that really started with the very first, first year and kind of went through probably, you know, third and fourth year kind of faded a little bit. I don't know if that's still year there, but it was like, never leave a man behind. So if you're going out, you never leave someone behind. You always invite them. Like you always, everybody's always a team wherever we go. So I don't know if that's still there. Yeah. We still don't step on the logo. It is, it is probably yeah. a lot smaller now. I mean, it's yeah. carpet with a much smaller logo. Oh and- my gosh. It was massive. I, I don't know who else can talk to it, but it was massive when we were there. So you had to like you couldn't even shimmy by another person. You kind of had to slide by them if they were standing normal. <laughs> so it was a good thing that they changed that. But uh, yeah, that's definitely something that we follow by. We do follow the no man left behind too when it comes to going out or doing team activities. We make sure to include everyone best we can. Yeah. Um, also, before games, we usually open up our off ice warm up with a game. I'm not sure if you guys started that. We always play some kind of tag or buggies up buggies down I'm not sure if you're really familiar with those I don't know if you guys did that but yeah we always open up game day off ice warm up with another game to kind of get warmed up and like make it fun yeah yeah exactly we would do a little hacky sack sometimes that kind of got people going and stuff with like balls and things like that yeah yeah something like that to kind of just get going but yeah Yeah. awesome what about you uh Emily did you did your team start any traditions that you think may have been passed down and Samantha obviously you can fact check her on that I don't know maybe Samantha can talk about the current traditions because I don't I don't really remember like starting any I'm I'm not superstitious so I don't know that um I mean maybe some other people had superstitions I don't know that we had anything like that but I don't know maybe Samantha can talk about what traditions you guys have now yeah, so one that has really stood out to me um, is something called warm and fuzzies. So it's something we do yeah. kind of like, yeah, okay. So you kind of just write one like positive thing about each person on the team and you'll hand all of them into the coaches and they'll sort them. And then like on a bus ride to like an away tournament or like a game, they'll be handed out and you kind of like read them before a game just to get like hype and like feel really good and positive about yourself. That's definitely a Leanne short of a, uh, Yeah. <laughs> For sure. No, I, I do remember that. That's a very like, I feel like that's a very lacrosse thing. Um, some of these traditions I take for granted now that I realize are like very lacrosse. Um, and I actually think, like I said, when I, st- when at the beginning, like um, that one of the great things about lacrosse is that um, it's very specific to women and like the coaches are women. Um, and I think you see that in the way that like we interact um, and you can tell that we're coached by women because um, men are great, but <laughs> I don't think that they uh, would think about like warm fuzzies. And I think mm-hmm. it's great um, to see women like coaching other women because um, we do um, we do need to be coached a little differently, which I think is why it's great that Megan, like Megan is coaching um, a girls hockey team um so I just wanted to throw that in there the feminist in me just yeah. talking about how great it is. <laughs> no uh, I, I agree with you Emily no. because we had Karen Nystrom she was my first female coach and it was it's just a different relationship that you have than when you have male coaches and my husband says this all the time because he coaches as well and he has male and female on the team and he says the women or the girls just they're different and they listen different as well. So he just says that it's different to coach them. So um, we, respond I, to, we respond to different things. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Warm, yeah. Warm fuzzies is a great example yeah. of, that, of the sort of positive reinforcement. And, um, and yeah, so I, I, I had forgot about that, but that's a good example. That's a great, I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. <laughs> I don't go any road, road trips anymore, but <laughs> definitely start something like that. <laughs> Oh, I love that. Thank you guys. That's such a great 
that's such a great note to end on, um, especially with the uh, with International Women's Day coming up as well. That was just, you know, for me, a nice little shot of girl power there at the end. So lovely. Thank you, guys. So we are unfortunately at the end of our program this evening. Uh, on the behalf of the Alumni Association, the Ridgebacks, our alumni and future alumni uh, in this webinar this evening, I want to thank Megan and Emily for sharing your insights and experiences and your fantastic Ridgeback pride. Um, the message that you guys had this evening of putting your best foot forward on the field and taking advantage of every opportunity is something that uh, I think all of us can apply to everything that we're doing. So I know we talked about this a little bit, uh, but uh, we, we're gonna see if we can get you guys some new alumni swag so that we can help you out with that, uh, that transfer from uh, the old brand, obviously, to Ontario Tech. I think some of my stuff might be vintage soon, so. <laughs> oh, yes, I know. We're, we're, we're slowly working on uh, on getting that new brand out there. And of course, you guys are some of our best ambassadors uh, with, with that, again, with that amazing Ridgeback pride that, pride that you have. Um, Samantha and Celine, thank you so much for being such great moderators this evening. Uh, to all of our fellow alumni, staff, faculty, students who joined us this evening, uh, thank you so much. Uh, Megan and Emily, they both spoke about utilizing the supports. Um, and we wanted to make sure that you all knew that the Alumni Office and the Career Center especially are here to help out. Um, so if you're ever looking for that boost uh, after graduation, you know, make sure you visit ontariotechu.ca slash alumni. Check out those benefits and the supports that are available to you. Um, for all of our attendees, you will be receiving a post-event survey. Um, we'd love to hear about who you'd like to see featured in an upcoming event. Our next alumni speaker series will be held at the end of March, and it's going to feature a panel of alumni who are now practicing law. Um, however, we're also very excited about Ontario Tech Pi Day, which is coming up here shortly. Uh, from March 1st to 12th, please join us for virtual speaker sessions featuring a wide range of Ontario Tech speakers. Uh, then join us on Pi Day, March 14th at 3.14 p.m. Uh, for trivia, where you'll have the chance to win some great prizes. Uh, visit ontariotechu.ca slash Pi Day for more information. Um, and make sure that you share on all of our celebrations on social media with hashtag Ontario Tech Pi Day. Again, on behalf of the Alumni Association Council, thank you to everybody for joining us this evening. Take care and stay well. Thanks.